Uh, hi, everyone. Thanks a lot for joining in. I hope you are able to see my screen. Uh, guys, could you please confirm if you are able to hear me fine and able to see my screen? Yes, it's uh, yes, yes. Okay, thanks. Thanks for confirming. All right, so we have good number of audience today. So let's get started. Uh, this is Rahul. Uh, I'll be your instructor for the entire uh, Selenium training. And uh, in this training, we'll be covering complete uh, Selenium as well as the core Java part. So core Java uh, is actually taken by a different instructor, Mr. Ajay. So this uh, is going to be uh, a demo session, like an introductory session to Selenium with Java. Many of uh, like you, uh, like there are, we have mixed audience today. So some people uh, who were already attending the core Java sessions and now they're starting with uh, Java there. Uh, now they're starting with Selenium. They're already done with the core Java part and now getting started with Selenium. And there, there are uh, new joinees, uh, new people uh, who uh, have recently joined, and now they're getting started with their Selenium training. So today is uh, like a mixed session of uh, introduction to Selenium and the basic concept, the basic configuration part, which is equally important to uh, the people who are uh, new and even to the people who have completed the core Java sessions. So after today's session, this batch is going to form from the next weekend. And uh, people who have recently uh, joined, the, they'll be starting with the day one of core Java from the next weekend from the very next weekend and uh, rest people who have completed the Java will gonna remain uh, in this batch itself. And meeting invites, new meeting invites and the WhatsApp groups uh, will be generated uh, for both the batches and will be sent in uh, the Telegram channel as well and as well to your mail IDs. So make sure uh, people who are already enrolled must join the Telegram channel so because that is the wider uh, group where we do all the announcements. So uh, just join yourself in the Telegram channel as well. Right, so uh, like as far as my experience is concerned, I'm having over 15 plus years of experience in uh, software testing itself. I used to work as a test manager uh, with one of the company in, in Gurgaon in India. And uh, like I'm into this automation Selenium uh, since 2011. So where I started with the very first version of Selenium. And then I've seen all uh, the life cycles in Selenium, worked, worked with various other automation tools as well. And I've built, uh, participated uh, in uh, many framework designing projects and I've handled automation teams. So I've, I've also been uh, in corporate trainings where I've delivered many trainings in uh, Delhi, NCR, in, in Mumbai, in uh, Bangalore, even in New York to a company named Shutterstock.com in Seattle to Spoken Communications. So this is pretty much uh, about my experience completely in testing and majorly in automation itself. So I, I hope uh, like most of you guys are coming from uh, testing background or anyone from development or any other background. So uh, like before we get started with the training, so uh, like I want that uh, the sessions should be very interactive so that you should not feel it like uh, this is an online session going on. So uh, there has to be uh, like a two-way uh, communication itself. So you can ask n number of questions, queries that you have, make it feel like a classroom session, like the way we interact in classroom. Same thing we are going to do it in a, in a, in a live online session, right? So I'm gonna make it very interactive so that you should uh, not feel bored because uh, Selenium, if you talk about Selenium, there is, uh, a little programming has been involved and programming is uh, a little boring concept. But when we uh, merge this programming with the automation part, it becomes very interesting. So that is how we'll be uh, taking these sessions. So before we get started, do you have any questions? Any Anything that you want to discuss? Anyone? You, you can unmute yourself. You can type it in a chat box. I'll be looking at your chat messages as well. 
So otherwise, uh, you can directly unmute yourself and you can talk to me. Any questions you have? Anyone? Will you have access to these recording? Yes, uh, I'm going to record all the live sessions and uh, your accounts, uh, like if they are not yet created, so you should have account on this portal. And here uh, you should have access to all the courses. So all the courses and uh, then uh, Selenium recordings will be hosted over here. So this is where I'll be adding the new batch and I'll start adding the recordings of uh, the core Java uh, batch will gonna start from uh, next week. So it will be batch May, 2024. And people who have completed the core Java, your Selenium sessions will be added from here, right? About the BD API of Selenium, uh, I'll check the feasibility because uh, BD was still uh, not very much stable. CDP feature is uh, stable that we are going to cover in this course. So I'll take a look at BD if some examples uh, can be done for uh, that part as well. Right. What is BD? Uh, this is uh, something uh, which is related to uh, Selenium 4 features. I'm going to talk about uh, Selenium 4 features. I'll show you the roadmap what we are going to cover. So if I show you this, so this is what uh, the content that I'm going to share it with you as well. So I'm going to start with basic introduction of Selenium. We'll see the basic configuration. We'll be working with the latest version itself. So we are not going to work with any Selenium 3, 2, or any other version, right? And then uh, complete uh, detailed core Java that is required for Selenium uh, will be covered. Then we'll be looking at uh, latest Selenium 4, 4 features. We're going to see all basics till advanced level concept, work with various locator strategies, like you must have heard about XPath, CSS, handling dynamic element, complex element. So we're going to uh, learn all the locator strategies in such a way that you can handle any element, any feasible element easily on a web page. And if you are able to handle all the elements on a web page, you can easily automate any website on your own. So these are the things that we'll be looking at. A lot of examples will be covered. And then uh, this is the Chrome Dev uh, uh, protocol feature. So which is recently, like once the Selenium 4, was out in the market. It was uh, uh, released in Selenium 4 itself. Prior to Selenium 4, CDP features were not there. So in CDP features, we can do a lot of things. We can manipulate geolocations. We can uh, simulate our web page as a mobile uh, device. We can uh, like uh, we can switch the view to iPhone 15, iPhone 14, and then we can try automating our website on that particular view. A lot of things are there. You can block some network requests. You can do some logging and handle SSL certificates. So these are some of the very important features we'll gonna look once we start with the Selenium part. Then we'll be covering our test ng framework, which is very, very important. We'll see how to create test cases, test suits. We're gonna do parallel test execution, right? And uh, we're gonna study about assertions, verifications, so these are some of the things. And then we're gonna integrate a lot of uh, APIs like Log4j, Extend Report for reporting. We're gonna see Dockers, we're gonna see Jenkins, and then we're gonna do AWS Cloud integration as well in this course. And then we'll be finally working on uh, two live projects, one using data-driven plus keyword-driven, that is the hybrid framework. And the second one will be using page object with page factory. So these are the two live frameworks uh, that will be designing it from scratch. It's not like I'll be picking up some project and gonna explain it to you. I'll be designing the entire framework from scratch in front of you so that you should be able to get a real time exposure. And if you, in case after the training, you're planning to switch your career in automation, then you should be able to justify at least two, three years of your experience in Selenium easily. So these are some of the things that we'll be covering. Uh, classes will be on Saturday, Sunday, both, right? Uh, because uh, like uh, we'll be doing uh, sessions two hours Saturday, two hours Sunday, depending on the topic. Some session might be 1.5 hours, some might be two hours, but sessions will be both on Saturday. We are starting with Sunday, but from Sunday, but uh, sessions will be both on Saturday and Sunday, right? And in case you missed to attend any, session then uh, will be uh, like recording the entire session as well. 
right? And uh, should I, uh, there are the questions like I am new, should I have completed another course first? as a test model and automation. See, uh, there is no need to learn any other course to start with Selenium automation, to be very honest, right? So Selenium has no dependency on manual testing at all. If you know basic concepts of manual testing, that is very good. If you're coming from a manual testing background, that's very good. And even if you are not from a testing background and want to start with uh, automation directly, you can do it because there are many developers who don't know anything in testing. They also learn Selenium and automate things in Selenium. So Selenium has no dependency in uh, of manual testing. But still, in case you want to brush up your manual testing concept, then uh, there's a detailed course on it. You can uh, like go to this course. Let me Let me show it to you. So if you scroll down, you're gonna see uh, that course on software testing. So you can try going through these lectures and you can cover all the basic concepts of software testing, right? So this is taken by a different instructor. Then there is one more course, which is recently taken by a different instructor. So this is something which is more uh, detailed training. So you can try going through this course. So if you go through this course thoroughly, like you'll have a good hands on on the manual testing part. So manual testing is just like a theoretical concept. So like you should be able to cover it from here easily. Uh, will we cover other framework like Cucumber? See, Cucumber, BDD, we are going to cover in a live batch, but uh, we are not covering in Selenium. We are covering in Rest Assured. So in API automation, we are covering. So that framework remains same, whether you do use it with Selenium, whether you use it with the API, it remains same. This is because, I mean, the course content that we have designed is uh, already going to take at least 3.5 to 4 months to cover all these topics. And there are endless topics in Selenium, right? So Cucumber, we are going to cover in a live patch, but that will be in the API automation. The best part is like when, if you have already enrolled uh, in this course, if you are going to enroll, uh, then you'll be enrolling for our lifetime membership package, right? So lifetime membership means that you can attend any training for free that we conduct in a live batch, be it from any course. Like we started one batch of Selenium Python today morning, India time, 8 a.m. Uh, IST time. So that is another uh, Selenium with Python. So you can attend that course as well in parallel. So this one is at 8 p.m. India time. That one is at 8 a.m. India time. So you can attend both the courses in parallel. And then uh, at 6 p.m. India time, we are running a course of API automation. So if we talk about uh, current industry demand, so companies are looking in automation, they're looking for UI plus API automation because frameworks are designed in such a way that they can handle both UI and API in the same part. Right. And all the frameworks like Cucumber, uh, Cucumber BDD, like uh, your hybrid framework, your page updates can be integrated with that uh, Selenium part, can be integrated with the UI automation, API automation, mobile automation. So all these things can be handled in one single framework itself. Right. So Cucumber, we are going to cover it uh, in the API. So you can attend parallel sessions uh, for uh, API automation, which is equally important. Right. Then, uh, if in case you want to see the examples uh, from Selenium part as well. So I have also created a dedicated course on it, uh, which is uh, which is going to cover Cucumber BDD for Selenium part. So you can check this course as well as there is one course which is dedicated only on Cucumber. So you'll find it over here. So this is Cucumber for Selenium. So here I've covered the detailed uh, explanation of step-by-step uh, -step how to configure Cucumber and all the major annotations in Cucumber. And then we have created the complete uh, Cucumber with page objects, page factory, detailed framework on Selenium from scratch. And not only this, uh, apart from these two, three live projects, there is a, a unique course which is an automation architect in Selenium uh, with seven life projects. So once you are done with the Selenium training, once you're done with uh, the initial two frameworks, then this is the course that you can refer to uh, master the framework designing part. So you can see over here, there are seven different life projects covered 
uh, using various various uh, like different patterns like data driven keyword driven hybrid page objects page factory cucumber the extended version of page factory using some multi threading concept java generic this is something like a, a very advanced level framework but in order to reach up till here you should be first uh, first your base should be built up and the base will be built up uh, through the initial course that we are going to do that is selenium with core java so once you do that course thoroughly your solid base for automation will be built up and then you can work on this framework designing part as well right so after going through at least these many things then you will be very much confident at the time of interviews Related to the automation part, related to the framework designing part, you'll be very much confident. And this is what will actually going to make you crack the interviews easily. Right. Any more questions before we start? Anyone? Rahul, currently we are going to use the Selenium 4, right? The live projects, it may be the older version, whether... Uh... It will work for latest uh, four version also. Uh, sorry, I didn't get that. Uh, could you please uh, be a little loud? Yeah. Uh, Selenium, we are going to use the latest version, right? The live yeah. projects, what we are using uh, is this, uh, late, it won't be a latest version. The live project that we are going to cover in the live session will be the latest okay. version itself, right? But if okay. you talk about this, so, see, these are the recordings. So recordings are like uh, to design uh, this particular course it took me days and nights to design this so like when i have designed it then the selenium version sometime it was like 3.141.51 sometime it was like prior version so i tried to use all the latest dependency but yes uh, this project will not gonna have selenium 4 dependency now when we talk about the framework designing part frameworks are not designed using the selenium apis F like the concept the architecture which is designed that is your core java architecture right when we start writing the code that is a core java code selenium is just a dependency selenium is just a version that we are going to add so whenever you are using any of these frameworks you just need to update your selenium version and most of the things 95 percent of the things are gonna work as it is so if we talk about core java now core java uh, maybe the latest version could be 20 and 20 above right but if you talk about writing if and else in core java in java 8 and if and else in core java in java 20 both are same so basic concept the the core part will always remain same and these versions keep on incrementing right now it is 4 dot something after a few months you're gonna see 5 dot something then you're gonna see 6 dot something so it, it keeps on incrementing but whatever basics that we are studying since beginning will gonna remain as it is. It's just like new enhancements are being done and you need to make sure whenever you are using Selenium, whenever you're working with frameworks, you should be using the latest version only, not the old version. And with very minimum changes, you should be able to fix this project. And if not, then I'm here to help you with that. Okay, Ramon, got it. Thank you. Yeah, sure, Drew. Uh, yeah, recording will be available uh, once we are done with the session. I'm going to upload the recording to the portal and we're going to share it with you. Yes, lifetime membership is a very unique concept. It means that uh, you can attend any training you want, uh, The any ongoing classes. Even if after one year you want to attend any session, you need not to do any enrollment again. You need not to pay anything again. This is something like a very unique concept. And many people are already uh, taking advantage of this. So uh, like you're not going to see this type of concept anywhere there. We are like seven to eight instructors. We are a team of seven to eight instructors. Like someone is taking DevOps batch. Some instructor is taking API batch. Some is taking Selenium Python batch. So every time a new batch is formed, we will be paying to the instructor, but you'll be joining all these batches for free. Right? So that's what this evening concept is. 
Uh, the course fee is just one time. It just like uh, in case you are buying from India, then it's just ten thousand rupees, and if in case you are outside India, then it will be one forty nine USD for you. So you just need to click on buy now and enroll yourself from the process given over here. Once you are done with the enrollment, you will be added to uh, all the groups. You'll get a complete access to all these courses, all these thirty plus courses, and we keep on adding new courses to the library. So any new course uh, added in future, you're gonna get uh, like free access to that. Uh, Selenium uh, Python session is already uploaded. The one that you attended today is already uploaded. So if you go over here, uh, it's not reflecting uh, because I'm not logged in. So if I click on this, then you're gonna see this is uh, the batch which is starting from May, like next week itself. So this is the demo session. Uh, which is already in the Yeah, thanks. Thanks, Drew. When you're going to start Python, it, it started. I mean, today was a demo session. So next session will be next Saturday, 8 a.m. Any job reference? Yes, uh, like you will, you'll be added to our Telegram channel where we keep on posting openings related information. As soon as we get any openings related information, we keep on posting over there. So many, many uh, like HRs, they get in touch with us. So we keep on sharing jobs related information, interview questions, resumes, all these things will be provided. Hey. Okay, any more questions before we get started? Anyone, anything you want to discuss? You don't have experience in Selenium, uh, how company will hire? So uh, do you, have any experience in manual testing so let's say uh if you guys don't have selenium experience how will you justify your uh, experience in selenium because companies these days mostly they look for uh people who have experience in automation there there are some freshers opening as well where they look that you if you have knowledge in uh, selenium if you have uh, like uh actually uh done some course on selenium then also uh, they're gonna prefer you if you're good uh in, in the knowledge part but uh, if you are applying for some experience position if you are working in manual testing from let's say past two years three years five years then after doing this course you should be able to justify two three years of experience easily so your existing manual testing project uh, when you are uh, like modifying your resume you should be stuffing all the keywords uh, related to Selenium, whatever that we are going to study. You'll be stuffing that in your manual testing project and you're gonna convert that into automation. So they're not gonna come to your company to check whether you have uh, worked on automation or not. It's just that your knowledge that is going to talk at the time of interview. So if you have uh, like thoroughly gone through this training, if you have practiced thoroughly, and uh, like if you automate at least uh, one website on your own, you're going to get that confidence. And that is what it is going to uh, talk in the interviews itself. Right. So that is how I mean, uh, it just practice. I mean, the more you practice, the more you're going to face uh, issues, the more uh, you face issues, you're going to troubleshoot. And that is what will actually going to help you in building your troubleshooting skills as well. And in, in automation, people are generally afraid of writing code. So to be very honest, when you're working in Selenium, the code, the programming is just the basic concept that you might have studied during the graduation time. If you have ever studied C, C++, basic code, Java, then that is the same level of programming you require in Selenium. You're not building any software, right? You're not building any website. So you don't need the development level code knowledge. You don't need that. You don't need any advanced Java. It's only the basic concept. So some people, they think Python is little easy to learn. Why should I not go for Selenium Python instead of Selenium Java? See, basic concepts remain same. If you talk about if-else, loops, arrays, 
the basic concept remains same whether you're doing python whether you're doing c sharp whether you you're doing java right if you know selenium java within two weeks you can migrate to selenium python and you can add on selenium python to your resume as well so only only basic concepts and Trust me, 60 to 70% of openings, in case you search it on different job portals, indeed, knockery.com, you're gonna you're gonna find 70% of the openings are still in Selenium with Java. Because a lot of integrations can be easily done using Java. So first add on Selenium with Java, then add on Python, right? You're gonna have a very strong resume. And there are a lot of things, a lot of things that you'll be integrating down the line once you're in this automation field. Right? Okay. Any more questions? Anything? Guys, when you are sending, typing the message in the chat box, then I can see most of the messages are directed to me. This is like direct message. So I want that you should select everyone in the meeting so that everyone should be able to participate in the discussion. Otherwise, uh, they're going to think where the question is asked. Right? So just change this to everyone. So that everyone should, uh, everyone else should be able to see uh, the questions you are asking. And don't worry about it. Everyone here is in the learning phase, so don't be afraid in asking questions. You can ask any silly question that you have, and I'm gonna answer it. Don't worry. Don't don't think that this question is going to be a very silly question. So don't be afraid of that. Right. So ask any question that you have. Yeah, thanks, Pulkin. Okay, any more questions before we get started with the training? All right, so in that case, let's get started with our session. So before we get started, the very first question that we are going to study what is selenium so what exactly is selenium anything and everything that you know about selenium just let me know so selenium is it just like a framework that we use to uh, automate web application selenium is a framework selenium is a library set of apis automation testing set of apis What else? Will allow automate web applications. So automation testing of web applications only. Only for web applications, right? Anything else apart from what Selenium is? It's a library, it's a framework, it's a set of APIs. People say it as a tool as well. It's a tool. It's an open source tool. So open source library. That is the most important thing. Open source. So open source means that there is no license required to work with Selenium. It's completely free of cost. Anyone can use Selenium. Just simply download it and start working with it. No license required. And you can automate any website you want. This is one of the best thing with Selenium, right? Like other automation tool, if we talk about competitors of Selenium, we have uh, QTP, UFT, RFT, and other automation tools are there, which are paid, which are heavy licensed tool, right? So if, if in case a company is buying uh, a 50 user concurrent license for QTP, it may gonna cost a huge, huge amount, right? Which uh, a single user cannot afford to buy that much uh, license cost, right? So whereas the uh, same functionality, Selenium provide absolutely free of cost, just that Selenium can only automate web-based applications, whereas QTP, UFT, RFT, other tools can automate other applications as well. What all other applications apart from web-based?
So what other applications QTP, UFT can automate? Desktop applications, correct. So we have web-based applications. We have desktop applications. So desktop is like you install a software on your laptop, on your Mac machine, and then uh, you perform testing on that uh, application, right? On, on your desktop itself. Whereas web application is something which you access via URL. Like this is a web application. This is a web application, right? So Selenium can only automate anything which is accessed via URL on the web page. Whereas QTP, UFT can automate web as well as desktop. But still demand of Selenium is more, right? Selenium can automate only web-based, cannot automate desktop. But still the demand of Selenium is more. And QTP demand is almost gone, right? Very few openings in, in UFT, in RFT. Right. Mainframe applications. Mainframe is like quite old, but if we compare, like we, you can say database applications are there. So I'll write database applications. So and any any other application that you have performed testing on? Not automation, manual testing. Mobile application, correct. Mobile applications are there. Any other areas where we perform testing? CRM, so CRM, uh, like again, uh, UI based. Cloud. Cloud is again UI based. It's a it's a web web application itself. API, correct. API as in web services. Like you have REST, you have SOAP. So majorly 95%, you're gonna see RESTful APIs these days, right? So where you perform manual testing and some of the tools you may have used. What all tools are there for API testing? Postman for manual. Postman. So Postman is the uh, like mostly used uh, tool and it's open source as well. SOAP UI is there, right? But some SOAP UI has got a premium version as well, some license as well uh, associated with it. But Postman is uh, completely free. Same way if we talk about uh, desktop, we, we have seen we have uh, UFT, QTP, right? QTP name is changed to UFT. If for web, we have... Uh, Selenium is there. We must have a different other automation tools as well. You must have heard about something called as a robot framework, right? Tosca is there, right? There are some premium, premium version in Tosca as well, right? Then we have RFT, we have QTP, UFT. So these are some of the automation tools for web. For desktop, we have majorly these tools. For for database, uh, it's like we use SQL, MySQL, Oracle, MongoDB, right? So a lot of different databases are there. And then for mobile application, have you heard about any automation tool? APM. APM is very popular automation tool for mobile application testing, right? So these are some of the tools associated with uh, different automation and manual testing frameworks. But uh, if we talk about Selenium, Selenium comes only here, only for web-based automation. But still, if you search for any openings, not only related to automation, even if you are searching for any opening in manual testing, Selenium is something like a prerequisite these days. And in the job description, you're gonna find that you should have uh, some exposure to Selenium, even if you are applying as a manual tester. Just by putting manual testing in your resume, it is very difficult to get a interview call these days. So why Selenium? Why only Selenium? Why not other automation tool? Why is Selenium very, very popular? Any reason, anyone? It's open source. It's open source. Correct. Selenium is completely open source, no license required, right? But open source is not the only reason. There are n number yes. of factors behind it. It works with most of the uh, languages. It supports multiple languages. Okay. Yeah. So platform it, independent. 
So if we talk about features of Selenium, it has got a multi-language support. A multi-language, as in what are languages it supports? Java, C Sharp. Java, C Sharp. Python, Ruby, Perl. PHP. Perl is not supported. C Sharp, Ruby, Python, PHP, JavaScript. So all major languages are supported. Then if we talk about, uh, someone says multi-platform support, multi-platform as in multi-OS support. Yes. So OS, uh, you can work on Windows, you can work on Linux, you can automate your script. Mac. Mac, on Solaris, on iOS, on Android, all major operating systems are supported. If we talk about uh, QTB UFT, then which operating system, or first, first of all, which language it supports? VB? Uh, VB, VB, script. VB script. And if you talk about VB script, uh, VB script uh, is from Microsoft, right? So uh, which platform it supports? Oh, Windows platform, other than Windows, only and only Windows. So if you are using QTP, uh, UFT, you are restricted to work only on Windows. And if your client want that your product should be uh, fully tested on Windows, on Linux, on Mac, because end user could use any operating system and your product should work fine on all major operating systems. So you cannot perform testing on other platforms. So this is one of the biggest drawback of using QTP UFT. Whereas if we talk about Selenium, the very first thing we have seen that Selenium supports all major languages. If we talk about a language called Java, if you ever install Java, the very first message you're gonna see is three billion devices runs on Java. So be it Linux, Mac, Android, iOS, any operating system you name is supported by Java, right? And if you are running your Selenium code in Java, you can execute that code in any operating system you want and that too without paying any license. So this is one of the best thing with Selenium. So you can run it with any language you are must, uh, you, you, it's like, uh, it's not like if my website is built up in Python, then I'm learning Selenium with Python. If my website is in PHP, then I'll learn Selenium with PHP. No, it's not like that. Even if you, if there is a developer team in your company who is like uh, using C sharp, then you need to learn C sharp to automate uh, things uh, using Selenium. No, it's not like that. So it's like uh, the multi-language support is like uh, prior to this testing team, Selenium is all like was used by developers as well. Right? Selenium project is actually created by a developer. So many developers have used Selenium and automated their modules. So like some developers were from Ruby background, someone from Python background, some were from Java background. Now, let's say if this project is only in Java, then the person who is working in C sharp, who is a C sharp developer has to learn Java and then he need to consume this Selenium library in Java and then he can automate things. But C sharp developer will say that, why should I change my career from C sharp to Java and then again learn uh, Java just to automate things using Selenium. Same thing is with Python developer. Someone is a Python developer, why he should learn Java? So that is where this library was created in different, different language bindings. So I'll find a complete library available in Java, as well as C Sharp, as well as Python, as well as Ruby. So whichever background you are coming from, you need not to learn any new language to work with Selenium. So if a developer is coming from Java, he can easily use Selenium with Java. If he's coming from C Sharp, he can use Selenium with C Sharp. That is what the multi-language support means, right? Any other feature of Selenium? Any other thing that Selenium supports? Multi-browser support. Multi-browser support. So again, multi-browser because it's a browser, uh, like web-based platform. So browsers are like majorly involved. So mm -hmm. is there, uh -huh. Fox is there, then Edge is there, IE is there, Opera is there, Safari is there all major browsers across the world are supported by Selenium, right? So which company created Selenium? Who created Selenium? Like if we talk about QTP, which company came up with QTP? Microsoft. 
Microsoft. Did Microsoft create it QTP? Mercury. So QTP was actually created by Mercury. Right? And later on, HP has acquired QTP. Now you'll see HP Load Runner, HP uh, QTP, HP UFT, right? So who created Selenium? Google? Did Google create Selenium? Did Google create Selenium? Sun? No. Anyone? Who created Selenium? James? No. No. So Selenium was actually created by a company named as Artworks. And the person who is behind this was Jason Huggins. And he started this project in 2006, right? So in order to automate uh, things uh, like daily routine tasks and other things, he created a small library. That library went up to such an extent, they thought of giving it some name. And they came up with a name called as Selenium. Now, why only Selenium? There's a reason behind this name as well. If we talk about Q, like at that point of time, around 2006, QTP, like Mercury tools were very popular. Prior to QTP, it was WinRunner for, for the UI automation, for desktop automation part, right? That point of time, there were more desktop applications. So like in order to automate those applications, uh, we have to purchase license from Mercury. And if we talk about Mercury in general terms, what exactly is Mercury? In just general terms, what is Mercury? Oh, yeah, sorry. He started this project in 2004. So 2006, WebDriver came into the picture. So what exactly is Mercury? Anyone? Molecule? Element. I, I believe uh, most of you have seen Mercury. Right. Where? I have seen thermometer as well as... Thermometer, yeah. correct. So, so there's a saying, if someone breaks thermometer, if you intake that Mercury, then you're going to die. So if someone intakes Mercury, then we need to give him an antidote. And that antidote is basically selenium. So selenium is basically an antidote to mercury. Selenium kills mercury. That is the reason they have given this project name as selenium. So to end the market of QTV mercury. And up to such an extent, they are successful as well. Not just because of the cost. There are n number of factors behind it. That why selenium is very popular. Why companies these days not looking for any licensed tool like QTP, Mercury, RFT, why they are investing more in Selenium? Not in terms of cost, but in terms of the resources. So a lot of factors behind it. Some of the factors we have just seen that what all things that Selenium support and what exactly QTP supports. Right? Not just saying, not just this. If I say that if you are working with Selenium, if you are starting your career in Selenium, you can create a project. Even if we talk about Java, you can create a Java project that can handle all these automation part, all these application in one single project. You can automate web-based application. You can automate mobile application. You can automate web services. You can handle database. You can handle desktop. All these things can be easily handled and integrated with your Selenium project in one single project, in one single framework. So that is how robust Selenium is. You can have 
a lot of integrations done with Selenium, which you cannot do with QTP. And the reason behind that, QTP, UFT, RFT, they are tools, they are automation tools. Tools like you get a you get a setup file, you double click on it, you install on your machine, right? It provides you a platform like a GUI sort of thing where you can do record and play, you can do scripting. That is what we generally get in a tool, right? You can use various features of that tool. Now, there is a saying that 100% cannot be automated. Why? Because we can use only those functionality that is provided by that automation tool. When we do manual testing, we, we write a lot of test cases, we do a lot of permutation combination. Even to test a login window, we end up writing 20, 30 test cases with different permutation and combinations. But it doesn't mean for those 20 test cases, you're going to get a feature in QTP UFT. What all features are available? You can use only those features and you can automate your test case. If there's a special scenario which is not there in QTP, if you are automating any particular part and that functionality is not supported by QTP, you go to HP, they, they provide you add-on to automate that functionality and they sell that add-on as well. So add-on is also created by a developer. If an add-on is there, you can use that add-on and automate that functionality. If an add-on is not there, you cannot automate that functionality. And then you will say that 100% cannot be automated. But this is not the case with Selenium because Selenium is not a tool. You cannot install Selenium. You're not going to get any setup file in Selenium. So if it is not a tool, then what exactly is Selenium? It's a framework. It's a library. It's a set of APIs. That is what Selenium is. Selenium is basically an API. Right? So what exactly is an API? What is an API? What do you understand by the term API? What is an API? Before we get started with Selenium, it is very important to understand what exactly is an API, what API consists of. So what is an API? It is an interface between two software communication to communicate. Mm -hmm. okay. Application programming interface, correct? But that's a full form. So what is inside application programming interface? What do we have in API? Reusable code, correct? What that code consists of? Middleware between two application, client server. So, so we compare API with web services as well. So those are also APIs, but there is something written inside those APIs. What is that? Char files. So jar file is an API. If you're using Selenium with Java, we get a jar file. If we are using with C sharp, we get a DLL file. If you are using Selenium with Ruby, we get a gem file. If we are using with Python, we get another package manager, right? Through which we install Selenium. So different languages, different uh, bindings are available. And all these are APIs. But what is inside this jar file? What is inside a DLL file? What do we have? Libraries, what, what do we have inside those libraries? Logics, what is written inside those logics? There are some methods and classes. Methods, functions, classes, interfaces, right? which a programming yeah. languages consist of, right? So we have all these functionalities written, which is already written by some developer, right? There's a code written. You can say it's a complete project, a project created by some organization. And then we are consuming that project in our own project, right? So if we are creating any Java project, we are going to consume a project which is created by some third party. Like if we talk about Selenium, Selenium created by ThoughtWorks. So we are going to take that Java project, integrate in our Java project, and then we're gonna use the functionality which 
the developers from ThoughtWorks have created. And when we consume that functionality, we call it as an API. Right. Let us understand this with a very simple example. I know this might be a little complex for the new people who have recently joined in. Uh, first of all, tell me who is not at all familiar with any programming language. I hope everyone must have studied some C, C++, basic Java during your graduation. Anyone here who has not even touched any programming language? Okay, so you have you have never studied any programming language? No. Have you have you uh, attended the core Java sessions, Pulkit? Yeah, this time I have done. Okay, okay, so I can say that at least you have attended the core Java session. So you must be familiar with something uh, which is called as a class, a function, a method, right? Right. Okay, how about others? At least you guys know what is what is a class. If you have, even if you have not practically written any code, created a class, still you have heard about there is something called as a class, something called as a method. Okay, so you've studied, not studied, but uh, you've read uh, from the Java session. That that's fine. I need very basic understanding of these things. See, today is just like an introductory session. I might be writing a little bit of code, but that code is just to make you understand how you are going to use Selenium, what level of programming that is required to work on Selenium, right? So even if you're not able to understand anything, don't worry about it. Th that's fine. If you have even taken the core Java sessions, that's fine. Right, so we'll be talking about a very, very basic concept. And uh, people uh, who are very new, they'll be starting with the ABC of Java from next weekend. So your core Java base will gonna build up. Don't worry about the programming part. And trust me, programming in Selenium is going to be very, very easy. Once we configure Selenium today, you're gonna see that it is very easy to configure Selenium and to get started with Selenium, right? So let's say I'm going to take an example. Let's say I'm a Java developer and I work with some XYZ.com. And here I got a task to design a calculator. Now in a calculator, I can add something, I can subtract something, I can multiply something, I can divide something. Various functionalities are there in a calculator. As a Java developer, if I want to develop these functionalities, in a Java program, what I'm going to do is I'll be creating one class in Java. We'll name it as a calculator class. So something like this, I've created a class. Now what class consists of? What do we have inside a class? A blueprint of an object, members plus methods, correct? Methods. Anything else that we have inside class? Variables, data members, correct. Data types. Constructor, constructor. Constructor, correct, correct. So all these things a class consists of, right? So what I'll be doing, all these functionalities, I'm gonna create in a form of a function inside this class. Like I'm going to create a function called as add. Inside this, inside this function, I'm going to write some code which is going to add some numbers, right? When I'm uh, talking about this as a function, we also call this thing as a method. When we are working uh, in Java, we call these things as a method. When we work in Python, JavaScript, we call these things as a function. So function methods, both are same thing. So if I'm saying function or method, both are same. There is no difference in that. So generally, when we use Java, we'll go, we are now going to call these things as a method. I'm not going to call it as a function. So don't get confused. So I'm, I've created a method called as addition. In this, I'm going to write some code, which is going to add some numbers. And then same way, I'm going to create one more method, subtract. I'm going to write some code. It is going to subtract some number. Then division, and then multiplication, and so on. So let's assume that I've created all these methods, calculate, add, subtract, divide, multiply, right? All the methods are created. And now I want to test these methods. I want to test whether addition is working fine or not, whether division is working fine or not. So what I'll do, I'm gonna call this addition method from this calculator class. 
So how to call a method from a class? How to call a method from a class? And we can create an object of that class and that object. object. Through object, right? Not directly through constructor, but yes, by creating object, we'll be calling uh, the method. So what, what is the syntax? What should I write? class name that variable name equal to new class, class name, name variable name variable name could be anything like abc yeah, or xyz or let's give it a meaningful name calci equal to new new class okay. name and the constructor yes. okay. so this is the syntax how we create an object of a class and how to call a method calci dot add calci dot method name correct and then if I want to call subtract, calci dot subtract, calci dot divide, right? This is how we keep on calling the methods. But before we call any method, we first need to create an object of a class, right? And then when we call the method one by one, we run this program, then everything that is written inside uh, these methods will be executed. That is how it works, right? Very basic programming concepts. So, uh, now, you said that before I call any method, I need to create an object of this class. And this is the syntax for creating object. But what is an object inside this statement? Where is the object? Object is new calculator. New calculator? Is this an object? Right. Is calculator an object? Is this an object or is so this an object? Write, when we write new calculator, even we can create an object by writing new calculator. So mm -hmm. I think the calculator uh, for function is an object. Mm -hmm. Okay. How about others? New? Is new an object? I think everything after this equals to. Everything after this equal to is creating an object. Okay, tell me what is this? What is this? This is the variable type. This is a variable type. So type. Not variable is class or class type. Okay. The, this we call it as a type, right? And this, what is this? Reference variable. Reference variable. This assignment operator. Assignment, assignment operator. operator. This this is the keyword new keyword new keyword and this this class. is the constructor constructor correct okay so we started writing the Java code in Notepad but uh, like there, there was a time when we used to write Java code in Notepad but now time has changed there are many editors available with us with artificial intelligence if we are not even good in coding these editors helps us a lot in writing code right something like uh, we have chat gpt these days so these editors also helps us like the same way if, if you write incorrect code uh, they will gonna give a lot of suggestions in fixing the code if there are hundreds of methods inside one class no need to learn all the methods simply put a dot you get a list and you can pick up the methods from there so some editors are paid, some are open source. Uh, there are many popular editors available like IntelliJ is there in the market, Eclipse is there. Eclipse is the, the most popular editor, very widely used in the industry. So we'll be uh, using Eclipse itself in this uh, training. In case you use IntelliJ, if your company is using IntelliJ, you can use the same concept with IntelliJ as well. So these are just the editors that support the programming language, that's it. REST implementation of Selenium, Java, everything will remain the same, right? So we'll be using Eclipse, but there's a prerequisite to get started with Eclipse is that you need to have Java installed on your machine. So Java as in uh, previously, the most supported version of Java was 1.8, that is Java 8, but now it is no more supported. The minimum requirement is that you need to have Java 11 on your machine, Ele Java as in, JTK, Java Development Kit, right? So you need to install this. 11 is the most stable version. After this 11, you can use 13, you can use 17, but don't use 
sorry don't use 20 and above i i've seen a lot of people facing issues uh, in the latest version and they, they then they have to uh, downgrade to the uh, previous stable version and then they start working right so we are not going to use uh, like the latest features of java 20 those are not required uh, for selenium right so if you use uh, jdk 11 as well all your major integrations are going to work absolutely fine with selenium so I'm talking about major integration. What all major integrations? What all things that you have heard which are integrated with Selenium? First of all, how many components are there in Selenium? Tell me Selenium components. IDE, RC, web driver, Correct. Correct. These are the four major components of Selenium in which RC was the part of 1.0 version of Selenium, which is almost gone. It's completely gone from the industry. Right. So we'll not be using Selenium RC. Officially, now there are three versions, one, three components. One is ID, one is web driver, and one is grid. And which is the latest version of Selenium? What is the latest version? Four. Anyone know the complete version? Like four dot one, four dot one eight, four dot one nine, four dot seven. So there's a new version released on April twenty fourth, which is four dot two zero dot zero. So this is the latest version of Selenium. So when Selenium initially came into the market, it was Selenium 1.0, which was started in 2004 by ThoughtWorks. Jason again, who started this component, and he created IDE, then he created RC, then he created Grid, grid 1. Right, BD is not in new comp. BD is there in the new component. It's it's in a development phase in the new component itself. Then we have uh, Selenium two came into the market. It was started in two thousand six and was officially launched in July two thousand eleven. And this was actually created by a person named as Simon Steward. So there were a lot of challenges that were there in Selenium one. So this project was redesigned entirely. And uh, like when this was designed, it was designed at Google initially. So Google, uh, then Simon Stewart was working as a lead developer with Google, where he started this project. Many uh, Google developer have contributed into the development of this project. And not only Google, since it's an open source project, so big, big developers from Google, from Facebook, from Adobe, and many other organizations have contributed into the de development of this project. So that is the reason why it is very, very much popular. And uh, it has got a huge community support as well, huge development support as well, right? So uh, many CMM five level companies are using Selenium. So it's not like, uh, so it's an open source, so like only few companies use it. Many companies are using Selenium. Many, many big, big companies are using Selenium, right? So officially, uh, like this July 2011, uh, like this version, if we talk about when Simon Stewart started it, he started with a component called as WebDriver. So later on in uh, July, this WebDriver and Selenium they got merged into one single project and they named the release as 2.0. So this component contains IDE, web driver. It also contains RC and then grid two was introduced with a new architecture. So this, this is what it was there in Selenium 2. And they supported this RC up till 2.44. And this release went up to 2.0. 53.1. So this uh, was your Selenium 2. And then Selenium 3 came into the market. 
So Selenium 3, uh, this word release went up to 3.141.59. And in Selenium 3, they completely removed RC. So it has IDE, web driver, and grid tree. And now we have Selenium 4, uh, Selenium 4, which the current release of this is uh, 4.20.0. And this also contains your ID, grid, web driver, and the grid for part. Now, what is the difference in all these releases? We're gonna have a detailed discussion around it once we discuss the brief history of this product, right? So I have a documentation as well, which I'll be sharing with you. There's just a theoretical concept, right? So we'll have some discussion around this as well, but uh, like we were discussing about that uh, to get started with uh, selenium you need to have eclipse you need to have java installed on your machine you need to have uh, jdk 11 available on your machine and then you'll be using selenium but there are a lot other integrations that uh, is supported by java 11 which is not supported by uh, you may gonna face little issues uh, when you use the latest version of java so what all integrations apart from selenium if i talk about selenium all these components in your automation, it is just 25%. Your entire automation, Selenium, is only 25%. So what is the rest 75%? What is that? Like all the dependency that we have to use in our project. So mm -hmm. what are like, those? Uh, we, have to, we have to configure maybe in Correct. Uh, so so the first part is of core Java itself, right? Then you have yeah. Maven. Then, apart from Maven, have you heard about any other component? Uh, like yeah. Mm -hmm. And for logging part, I have heard about one component, but I'm not sure. Yeah. That is not 4 uh, Not 4 right. Then we have Jenkins. Then we have Dockers. Then we can also integrate AWS Cloud, right? AWS Azure, these things can be integrated as well, right? Then we for uh, we can also integrate the database automation. Like we can uh, use the Java code uh, and create a JDBC connection. And then we can connect to SQL, MySQL, Oracle, right? So we have JDBC APIs available. We have uh, some automated mail APIs available. Like we, when we are uh, executing our test, a report is generated uh, using something called as extent report. And then report is attached to our email and sent to our test lead development manager, right? So that is done automatically using the Java mail API, right? We have some concepts of properties that will be studying it, right? So a lot, lot of things can be integrated using Selenium. But if you talk about these things, without these things, you cannot create an automation project. You cannot build up a framework without using these things. And Selenium has nothing to do with these components. Maven is a build tool or a dependency management tool. And it is widely used by developers as well. And they're not using Selenium. So it has nothing to do with Selenium. But Maven is actually used to get Selenium dependency. What is dependency? Uh, you can say that to get the Selenium automation tool or to get the Selenium project, you need Maven. To build your project, you need Maven. How to use Maven, we're going to see it in the next lecture. Right in the next session, we will start configuring this Maven build tool and the dependency management tool. Right now, it is not required. But in order to use any of these components, we don't have any dependency of Selenium. But in order to create a framework, in order to create an automation project, we have to integrate all these things in one single project. Same way, if we want to automate, uh, if we are talking about Selenium, like we want to do UI automation, then Selenium is available in a form of a jar file. You mentioned Java jar file, right? Same way, 
if I want to automate something on database, like I said, we have JDBC. So what is this? This is another jar file. In the same project, I can add JDBC jar file and I can automate database queries as well. And not only this, I can add another jar file, which is called as APM. And I can automate mobile applications as well. Directly on my real mobile device, I can launch an application and I can automate it, which is done using APM. Now, what is APM? It's just a jar file. Like we in a project, we are adding Selenium jar. Same project, we can add APM jar. And same way, there is something called as rest assured. This is another jar file. Through this, I can automate my web services, APIs, restful APIs, not using Postman, using the Java code. There is something called as Win App Driver. This is another project. This is another jar file. I can include it in my Selenium project and I can launch a notepad and perform testing on it. Means desktop applications can also be handled. Right. And in order to integrate all these things, we create some frameworks, some automation frameworks. Those frameworks are your data driven, your keyword driven. Right. Or data plus keyword is called as hybrid page, object model, cucumber, BDD. Right. These are different approaches, different automation frameworks in which we're going to add all these components, including Selenium. So even if you are creating a data-driven framework, you add all these things in one single framework. And you can automate Selenium, you can automate APIs, you can automate mobile applications. Everything can be integrated in one single project. And the best part, you're not paying anything to automate any component. So all these things, web, desktop, database, mobile, web services, all these can be automated using open source projects itself. So that is the reason why Selenium is very much in demand. Right, because with Selenium, you can integrate anything. Then why will company go for QTP, UFT and buy a huge license? when all these things are already available in an open source technology. So that is where instead of investing in license, they're investing in the resources. They're investing in the knowledge, right? So you need to add all these knowledge in your resume, in your upcoming automation journey. Then you're gonna see what level of demand you have. And the demand is equivalent to developer. The salary packages are equivalent to developer. But the sort of comfort you get in automation, when you compare it with developer, at time development, they have to stretch long in order to uh, deploy a release. And if, if there is a release, they have to push to production. Developer might be stretching for 12 hours, 15 hours a day. But this is not like in automation. Right? It's not like a product has to launch. You have to automate that thing as well right now. No, it's not like that. The environment is pretty much cool in, in automation as compared to development. But the packages are equivalent. If you are a five years a person, five years experience in automation, uh, seven years, 10 years, you're going to find packages like anything in automation. But yes, there's no more scope in manual testing. Right? Manual testing is something like the very first thing you need to clear your basic concepts, right? That is where you start with manual testing. But now testing profile is already converted something into SDET. That is software development engineer in test. Right? So the profiles are converted this way because the competition has grown so much. 10, 15 years back, there was a time that if you know what is testing, how to write a test case, what is a test plan, then you can easily crack interviews. But now it is not the time like we are just with the manual testing knowledge. It is very difficult to survive in the industry. 
right? So that is where we first start with Selenium. Selenium helps us in building a base for automation. And once our base is built up, then integrating APM, integrating REST assured is a very simple task. Because Selenium is a Java project. REST assured is also a Java project. This project contains some classes method. This project contains a different class method. So you just need to call those methods and automate the website. Right. So the example that we are taking over here as well, this is another Java project, a calculator project. It contains some classes, some, some classes, some methods. So how to call a class method we have just seen. Now we'll be using this editor and then we're going to see this practically. And then we're going to configure Selenium practically as well. You're not going to see any difference in this calculator project or a Selenium project. And that is how you'll be using other projects as well. Right. So step by step, we're going to look at it. Now, let's say the first. Yeah. So actually, one of the two things. Uh, please, uh, please, please be a bit loud. I'm not able to hear you. So what is exactly JAR and what is exactly framework? See, JAR file, uh, you, JAR file framework, both are same thing. Your framework consists of the functionalities itself, right? Uh, the functionality which is already designed, already developed by some organization. And that functionality is available in a form of a JAR file to you. So JAR file is just like a Java archive. So you generally, either you can give the complete code to someone, your complete project to someone, or just give that JAR file instead of giving the entire project code. So both are same. Why, why I'm asking this, like many companies, they ask, like have you done automation? I say yes, but they ask them, have the different frameworks. Do you understand what is framework? So framework is what? Uh, it's a combination of multiple components. Is Tosca also using Selenium? I'm not sure because Tosca is something like a license component. So I generally don't prefer working on license tools. But yes, there are many, many, many tools who are using Selenium server in order to execute things on a remote machines. Not just Selenium. Selenium, there is one component called a Selenium grid, which is actually used by different other automation tools as well. Right, so you might have heard right that Tosca might be using uh, Selenium integration for executing things on remote machine, right? But I'm not hundred percent sure about it whether Tosca is using or not. But yes, if you have read it somewhere, then it could be true because many other tools they use it. Right. So let us get started with the configuration part. First, let's see how, uh, I mean, this is the stable version that I'm using. If you're using Java 17, that's okay. But if you have latest Java on your machine, then go to control panel, whichever Java you see, just uninstall it. Go to control panel, uninstall a program, just see which version of Java you have, or if you have Java or not on your machine. So you'll be able to see from here. If you have Java, so just a moment, the list is getting updated. Where is Java? Where is Java? See, I have Java Development Kit 11 on my machine. So if you have any other uh, version, then just select it and uninstall it. Uh, can we use for performance testing? Performance testing, we have other open source automation tools like uh, other tools available, which is like JMeter is there, but Selenium cannot be used for performance testing. It's only for functional testing, not for not fun non-functional test cases, right? So if you see any other version like 20, 21, any other version, just simply click on it, uninstall it. And uh, then what you need to do, you have 19, 19 might gonna create some issues. So just uninstall it. And uh, like you're starting from beginning. So I'll say uh, use simply dive download JDK 11, right? So for the timing, you can keep 19. Tell the time you don't face any issue. Just keep that version. But later on, once you start integrating other things, if you face any challenge, 
then uninstalling java and installing the 11 version it's it's a very simple task it it might not interrupt uh, any other running program so don't worry simply go to this link java is by oracle now you need to uh, like you you see this java development kit 11 different operating system available based on your uh, if you are on linux mac windows you need to install it i'm on windows 64 bit I'll be downloading this exe file. When I click on this exe, I check this. Uh, it may not directly download it. It will ask me to uh, create a Oracle account. So you simply need to create a free Oracle account and provide that username, password, click on sign in and the Java gets downloaded. So this is the simple way of downloading Java, right? Once you download Java, you get a exe file. Just double click on it, next, 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 and Java gets installed. That's it. That That's the only way you need to, uh, like you need to follow in order to download and install Java. Once Java is installed, you'll find Java inside C drive, program files, and you'll see a folder of Java here. If you open it, you see JDK 11. Open it, you'll see all these things. Inside bin, you're gonna find your Java over here. Now, we just seen a lot of integrations that we do with Selenium, right? And most of these integrations will not work if you don't have Java configured globally on your machine. Because Maven don't know where Java is there on your machine. You just install it. it you may install it inside program files. You may install it in a different location as well. But Maven don't know where Java is. Jenkins don't know where Java is. So you need to configure Java globally on your machine via system environment variables. So what you need to do, just go over here and type edit. This is a shortcut, which you will be able to see edit the system environment variable. Click on it. And here you need to click on environment variable. When you click on this, you see a lot of things. One is the user variable. One is the system variable. So you need not to do anything inside the user variable. You need to go inside system variable, Click on new and type a variable name, name it as Java underscore home. And here you need to paste the path of JDK folder. Copy this and paste it here. That's it. So what you are doing is you're creating a variable like over here, a variable created, which is holding the address of this root folder that is JDK 11. And Java is inside this bin folder. So what we'll do, we'll go a little down we'll find a path variable over here. We'll edit this. You're not going to do any changes inside this. So if you remove anything or edit anything, you can see your system 32 uh, properties are also added over here. If you remove or delete it, it might corrupt your windows or might uh, like uh, might stop any other running program as well, right? So don't do, don't make any changes over here. Simply click on new and type percentage java underscore home percentage. This will bring the path of java home here. And then java is inside bin, say backslash bin, that's it. Like I already did it over here. So I'm not going to redo it. Once you do this, click on okay, click on okay, java is successfully configured. And now open up command prompt. You want to see the current version of java, java hyphen version. And you can see it is showing Java 11 on each. This is the very first installation you need to do. After this, you need that editor to uh, start with the Java project. So simply say download Eclipse. Go to this link. You'll see one installer over here. Don't install from here because Eclipse contains so many things, so many packages. Simply click on download package. And here you see Eclipse ID for Java developers, ID for enterprise Java, C, C++, Ruby, Python, PHP, multiple languages are supported by Eclipse. So it's just an editor. We need this, this version of Eclipse, this component of Eclipse. So click on, if you're on Windows, download from here. Mac, Linux, download from here. When you download this, you get a zip file. See in the status bar, it is showing zip. So over here, 
So you'll get a zip file. Once you download that, you, you get a zip file like this. I've already downloaded it. I'll go to D drive software. I've kept it over here. This is, this is what you get. Just right click, unzip it. So once you extract it, you're gonna get it over here. I'm using 2023-03. You can download the latest one, 2024-03. So when you open it, you get a folder like Eclipse. Open this. There is nothing installable in Eclipse. You get this application, double click on it, and it will launch your Eclipse. If you don't have Java configured, then you'll receive an error over here itself. Eclipse will not work if Java is not there, right? So now this is the very first screen you're going to get is select directory as a workspace. Now workspace is a location where you'll be maintaining your project, where you'll be writing the code. That code will get stored in some location. That location is what your workspace is. Next time you want to launch that project again, you want to open that project, you need to give the path of that project here. That's it. Like if you're creating a new project, then uh, create a workspace with any name you want. Like I'm going, I'm creating a calculator project. So let's create a workspace, name it as calculator, right? Or let's say, let's create it with calculator name. Let's click on launch. Now this project must be created inside D drive workspaces and see calculator created over here. So this is, these are different workspaces that I've created based on the batch name, batch number, you'll find so many workspaces over here. So this is a new workspace. Now, when the workspace is created, you'll see a welcome screen, just close it. And this is what your workspace, how it looks like. Here, this is a project explorer. You'll be creating a project. You'll be adding classes. Here, you're gonna write some code, close this. This is where you're going to see the output of that. So we're going to talk about more Eclipse features once we start with the training. For the timing, what we need to do is we need to create a calculator project, right? And for that, we need to create a Java project inside it. So click on create a project, select Java project, step by step, right? Click on next. And here, give the project name, any name like Kelsey, project. Make sure your Java is selected as 11, right? Because you have Java 11 on your machine. If you have any other version, select that one. Uncheck this create module info. This is not required. Click on finish. Click on open. And you will see a calculator project created. Over here, you will see one SRC folder where you will be writing your code, creating your classes and one JRE system library. These are your inbuilt Java library, means your complete core Java, what all internal classes are there, is mapped to your project. Now, what happens is when we used to write Java code in Notepad previous time, like we used to write some import statement. Like if you have ever worked on C, C, C++, you must have seen people write include conio.s, studio.s, something like that, right? Same way when we work with Java, we need to write some header statements over here as well. These are basically called as packages, packages we need to import. So some of the packages are inbuilt, like in there are inbuilt Java classes, uh, like java.util, math.random, and number of libraries are there, right? So when you are using Eclipse, we need not to worry about all these imports. Eclipse handle it automatically. We just need to worry about our own classes, that's it. So what we need to do is we just need to right click over here and say new and click on class. And we need to create a new class with any name, but it should start with a capital letter. So since it's a calculator project, I'll create a class name as calculator, calculator. And I'll start with capital C. Even if I started with small c, it doesn't matter. It will not going to give any error. It will still create the class. But there are some coding standards that we need to follow, that the entire industry follows. Class name always starts with a capital letter. And then we are going to check this public static void main. Click on finish. And here you're going to see a code. Let me increase the font size. 
So a lot of things inside this code, something public, something class, static, void. These are some reserved keywords of Java. We have one one dedicated sessions in Java for all these things, like public, private, protected. These are called as access modifiers, access specifiers. Static, non-static members we have, void, string, int. These are the return type to a method. This is a method. This is a class. This is the body of this class. This is the body of this method, right? You need not to worry about all these things right now, right? For the time being, like these are comments, I'll just remove it. This is a main method inside this class. By default method in any class, if you want to execute anything in Java, it has to be inside this main method in, in core Java specifically, right? So if, let's say uh, the very first thing what we do is we try to print something. If you guys have worked on C, C++, tell, tell me first C, how to print in C? How do we print in C? Printf. Printf, correct. C++? Uh, C out C. Correct, correct. And how about Java? System dot out print and System out print and right? So very first program of any programming language is to print hello world, right? So inside this, we have written in double quotes, hello world. We click on the run button. This is the run button. And you will see hello world is printed, right? Very simple. So, but we are not here to print hello world. We are developing a calculator project, right? In calculator, we have various methods available, addition, subtraction, division, right? So here I'm going to create all these methods. So one of the methods like public void add. Now, when I'm starting with a method name, method name always starts with a small letter. I can create it with a capital letter. It will not give me any error. But again, it's a coding best practices. There is something called as Camel casing, camel casing, which is followed in the industry. Now, what is this camel casing? Now, if I have any three words like the dark night, it is a little difficult to read it if I write it like this way. If I want to create this as a class name, class name always starts with a capital letter. And anything combining will be in caps. See, this is in a form of a camel. Now this is more readable. If this is a method name, then I'll start it with a small letter and any joining thing will be in caps. Now see, I'm able to understand. If you read any other development project, you'll be able to understand, okay, this is a method name, this is a class name. You should be able to identify this, right? So this, through this process, code becomes more readable. Now, next time you are reading any Selenium project, any other automation project, you should be able to come to know, okay, this is a class, this is a method, and how you need to use it, right? So this is a method, and I need to write some, I'll be writing some code, which is going to add some numbers. But right now, let's say we are very new to the programming. We don't know how to write that code. So let's do one thing. Let's simply print something inside it. That is adding some number. Means if you call this addition method, it is going to print adding some numbers. Same way, I'll be copying this and I'm going to create another methods and name it as subtract, divide, multiply. And here, subtract, divide, multiply. Right? So this way I've created all the methods. Now I'm going to create one more method, which has got a same name as of the class name. What we call it as? A method having a same name as of the class name. What is this called? This is constructor. Constructor, correct. So what are constructors? It's a special method. With class name. It's the mm -hmm. same class name. 
and you don't have any return type no no when it and i'm correct we don't avoid in string correct what else what are constructors we have constructors and, uh, yes, yes, yes. yeah it is created by an object of class is created that it is initiated by default constructor mm -hmm. It will be called when object is created, same name as the class name, correct? So all these things are correct, right? These are also, uh, like, let's say I just mentioned that it's like a method only, right? I can write some code inside this as well. I'll write a code calling constructor. Now, how to call this? Okay, before constructor, let's say, let me comment out this code. Let's say we have created these methods. We have seen how to call these methods. We have, we have written a code over here. Calculator calc equal to new calculator. And this is how we call it, right? So let me copy this code and let me paste it here first. Let me see if the code is correct or not. And see the code is correct. It's not throwing any error. Means if instead of calculator, I write calculators. See, it has highlighted with the red color. Now, if you mouse over on this, it will give you suggestion. Calculators cannot be resolved to a type. See, this thing is called as a type. Now it is asking to either create a class calculators, but why should I create calculators? I have a calculator class available. Change to calculator. Click on this and it will be changed. Now, if you say calci dot, you get a list of all the methods you've created. You've created addition, all this, save this, click on run. And you can see adding some numbers. Same way you call methods one by one, calc dot divide, calc dot subtract, calc dot multiply. And if you run this, see the complete functionality successfully executed. Now you have created one more method, which you are saying that this is a constructor. Now let's call this method as well. So I'll go over here, we'll say calc dot, not getting this in the list, see? Calculator is not there in the list. Then how to call this method? How to call this constructor? How are we going to call this? Object. Object? What, what should I write to call it? Should I write anything? Uh, this will call automatically when new calculator got created. Whenever an object is created, the very first thing that is called is a constructor. So even if you don't call these methods, this is where we are creating object, right? So we'll just save this, we run this, and you'll see the very first thing that is called is a constructor automatically. By default, it is called. You need not to call it explicitly. Whenever an object is created, it will automatically be called. Now, Let's come to the same question again. What is an object inside this statement? Is Calci an object or is new calculator an object? Or is this an object? New calculator. New calculator? Right. New calculator is an object, yeah. Correct. So most of the people are saying new calculator, right? So there are some people who say Calci as an object as well. So let's say, let's assume Calci is an object. So I, I remove new calculator. This is still a valid statement, see? If this is an object, if I run this, then constructor will be called, right? So when I run this, will the constructor be called or not? No, correct? If I run it, nothing, nothing happens. It means this is, a not, this is not an object. Now what I'll do, I'll remove this. Still it is a valid statement, no errors. Now, if I run it, tell me whether the constructor will be called or not. Yes, it will be called. It will be called? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Let's run this. See, this is a constructor. Right? So this is where the object is created. But if this is an object, why we need that Kelsey? What is, why do we write it? Yeah, this object will Wait, not be able to call. To store this object. Call other methods from the class, right? Calci dot add, calci dot subtract. Means if I don't have that calci, can I call this add method without that calci? No. I cannot. 
Anyone else? Can I call addition without that, Kelsey? You can call by, by this, but at runtime, when and you this? do it, this, it, it, it means by this keyword. This. You're saying by this keyword, right? No, not by this keyword. Any other way? Can we call? Can we call addition without Kelsey? Can we call it? Yeah, you can use mm -hmm. the calculator dot. Uh, pass. Well, new under the pages. No, we dot. can call it like yeah. this. New calculator dot add. So if you run this, you're gonna see adding some numbers. Now, what if I want to call subtract? I again need to write this. Again, need to write new calculator dot subtract, right? Then I need to call divide. Again, need to say new calculator dot divide. New calculator dot multiply. So it means if I want to call four methods, I am creating four different constructors. I'm calling four constructor four different times means I'm creating four different objects. And what if there are 100 methods? Will I be creating 100 objects? Each object to call one method. No, I'm not going to do it. No. Right. So wherever the object is created in the memory, what I did, I'm just storing the address of that object in some variable. Variable name could be anything, ABC, XYZ, or we give it a meaningful name. Now, every variable in Java must have some type. Like if we talk about, I need to store some value and uh, like, uh, sorry, if I want to store some name or let's say I want to store 100, I'll be storing inside a variable called as value equal to 100. What will be the type of this value? Int, right? Int. Everyone knows it should be integer, int. right? Int value. But what if I want to store my name? Can I store it inside int? If I want to store my name over here, can I store it like this? No, string. No. It will be string. First of all, string will always be double quotes. But I cannot store it inside int. I need to change this to string. Now, what is this string? What is int? What is string? What is int? What is string in Java? What are these? Data types. Data types. Right? Anything else apart from this? Anything else? What, what exactly this string is apart from data types? Uh, so class. class. If you do a mouse over on this, it will tell you that string class. So string is also a class in Java. If this is a class, then what is this value? What is this value for string? Variable. Variable. A reference variable for string. So if you say value dot, you'll be able to see all the methods inside the string class. Right? Same way, like when we are storing string values, the type has to be string. When we are storing numeric values, the type has to be int. Now we are storing this value. So what will be the type? Will it be string? Will it be int? It will be of the same class type. So that is the reason we write calculator calci equal to new calculator. Now when we do calci dot add calci dot subtract Kelsey dot multiply Kelsey dot divide and then we run it. So what happens? Only one object is created and all the methods are referred from the same object reference. Right? So this is a very basic concept. Although these things you'll be learning from scratch in your core Java sessions once they are started from the next weekend. But in order to understand what exactly is an API, we are actually doing this process. Now, let's say I've created the entire calculator project. I've tested everything is working fine. All the methods are working fine. Now I want to publish this project in the market. And let's say I've written some 500 lines of code in addition method with a very complex logic to add numbers. Now, what I want that I don't want anyone else who want to do addition division should again put this much effort in order to do addition division. He can he can take my library, he can call my methods and implement in his project without rewriting the entire code. So I want to launch 
again, I want to launch this as an open source project. I will not be charging anything from anyone. And open source does not only means that it is free of cost. Open source means anyone can contribute into the development of this project as well. If some person comes to me and say, I want to uh, do some enhancement in this project, I want to create some functionality which can calculate square root, percentage, and number of other things, then he's most welcome. And if someone wants to use this as a free of cost, want to add or divide something, then he can access these methods. All right. So what I'll do, how to launch this project in the market, what I'll do, I'll just right click on this project. I'll click on export. From Java, I'll select this jar file and I'll click on next. And here I'm going to give some name to this jar file. I'll name it as calculator and I'll say dot version. 1.0, the very first version of my project, dot jar file, right? And I'll store it on my desktop. Save, finish. Can you do it again? Like, where did you get the jar okay, file? I'll show it to you. Right click, export, jar, next, give the name, select the path, click on finish. That's it. Okay. And then you'll see this calculator jar. Now, it's not like if I double click on it, it is going to install calculator. Is it going to install calculator on my machine? No, right? So this jar file only contains what all classes we have created, what all methods we have created inside those classes. That is the only information that this jar file contains. Even if I don't share the code written inside addition method, the 500 line code, you'll not be able to see that code. But you can still call addition method with the help of this jar file, right? Most of the time people, they hide their code. They don't show their code, but you can access the functionality. You need to know, okay, there, there is a class called calculator. There are method addition division. Just call it and implement that functionality. That's it, access that functionality. You need not to worry about the code. How will I do that? Uh, I'll, I'll show it to you. So what you need to do is uh, you'll be uploading. Like, now you want this jar to be, this project to be accessed from any part of the world. So how will you do it? You'll upload it on your website because the website can be accessed from any part of the world, right? Now anyone can go to your website, download this jar file and can perform addition division easily. Now let's say uh, after implementing this calculator project, I left this organization. So I'm going to close this project. Close it, right? And I joined another organization. Let's say I join, again, as a Java developer, I join American Express, right? So there's a project created by American Express, uh, name it as MX project. This is also a Java project. I was hired as a Java developer, right? And they are, I was hired in between of this project. So they already have their banking domain, so they have a class called as banking. And in this class, they have a couple of functionalities available, like uh, there's a method for calculating profit. There's a method for calculating loss. So these functionalities were already there. And I was hired in between of this project. They asked me to implement a functionality which could add salaries for n number of employees. So something like I need to create a method called as addition over here as well. And let's assume the, the logic which I have to write inside this method is same to what I've written, implemented in my calculator project. Now there are two ways to design it. Either I can write the entire code again. I can do it, but that code is little complex. 500 lines of code may gonna take me a couple of days to finish it. But why should I put on put in such effort again when that functionality is already available in a open source in a free library? So what I'll do, I'll go to that website, I'll download that project, and I'll gonna get a jar file of that project. I'll right click on my project, go to build path, click on add external archive, and I'll select that jar file. Click on open. And that project is now added as a reference library in my project. 
if i expand it you're going to see calculator class you're going to see calci uh, add division multi but you're not able to see the code what is written inside addition method because developer has not shared the code that's fine i don't need to worry about it, that code right i'm not developing calculator i know there is a addition method functionality already implemented i just need to access that functionality in my project so without rewriting re recreating the entire functionality so i got the access now how to use it i'll simply be creating an object of calculator class i'll say calculator calc equal to new calculator and see i am able to access this class with the help of this jar file if the jar file is not there eclipse if i if i remove this eclipse will not be able to understand what this calculator is because this is a third party project i'm adding in my project so i need that particular jar file over here and then i'll be able to access this calculator and now if i want to implement addition let's change this to add salary so what i'll do i'll simply say calci dot add that's it and the entire functionality implemented now if you want to test this functionality you need to call add salary method from this banking class so how to call this from banking class you need to create an object of banking and where inside the main method so let's add the main method over here so i'll add a main method and inside this i'll say banking b equal to new banking and then i'll say b dot add salary i got this method if i run this you will see same functionality is executed without rewriting the entire code i am able to access the addition functionality with the help of this jar file so this is what acted as an api to mx project this is a project which is already created by some third party and now you need not to recreate the entire project you're just accessing the functionality of that project with the help of this api this jar file and if you're talking about selenium selenium is one of the same thing selenium is available in a form of a single jar file or multiple collection of jar files which you can download it from their website now which is the website of selenium which website should we go to download that jar file Come on, tell me, which is the website of Selenium? Anyone? Selenium HQ? Selenium Dev. Selenium Dev. Selenium HQ was the previous website. Now it's selenium.dev. Right? And yes, it can be downloaded from Maven website as well. We'll see that thing as well. But right now, we are going to get it from here. This is the official website of Selenium. See, Selenium automates browser. That's it. Selenium is only for browser-based testing. And over here, you can see WebDriver ID Grid. These are the three components, three major components in Selenium, right? So I'll go to download. And we'll see over here, the Java version is 4.2.0, right? This is the latest table version released on april 24 if you go down you will see this latest table version just click on it and see what it is going to do it's downloading something and it's just a 36 mb jar file that it has downloaded now what we'll be doing this jar file is in the downloads so i'm going to copy this path i'll right click over here the same way that we have added calculator jar We'll go to add external archives, go to download, and we'll add this jar file. That's it. And Selenium configuration is done. Now I can automate any website in the world. This is the only configuration that is required. You need Java 11, you need Eclipse, you need this jar file. And now start with the automation. So to start, to get started with the automation, very first thing you need is to launch a browser. So like in calculator, we have a class calculator. We have created object of that class, right? In this jar file, we have a calculator class. We have created object of that class. In this jar file, we have a class called as, let me remove this. We have a class called as Chrome driver. I'm going to create an object of that class. 
That's it. See? And now what I'll do, I'll click on run. As soon as I click on run, you're going to see a browser launches. These are just log messages. How method. did you install the jar file of uh, Chrome? Sorry? How did you install the jar file of Chrome? I've, I've not installed anything for Chrome. Now that you, you okay. must be talking about Chrome driver exe, right? Right. Now that is no more required. So previously when we worked with Selenium, we need the browser executable like Chrome driver exe, Gecko driver exe. Now they are no more required. We have some implementation of Selenium manager after the Selenium uh, 4.6 version, uh, like uh, 4.606 onwards, some, somewhere around that. So after that version, uh, there, there was no need of uh, downloading the EXE based on your browser version and give the path. It is no more required. It is inbuilt in your Selenium now. You just need to create an object of the browser that you are working with and automatically it will be downloaded based on the browser version. So need not to worry about it, right? Chrome driver exe is not required, no more required. Now, I just written this line of code. I clicked on run and a browser launched. So some developer must have written like a few lines of code to launch this browser, right? Maybe he has written some complex code, could be 100 lines of code. But where is that code written? Can anyone tell me where is that code written to launch this browser? Inside the jar file, correct. Where inside the jar file? Where inside the jar file? Chrome driver class, correct. Inside the Chrome driver class. Where inside the Chrome driver class? In method. In method. Which method have we called so far? So, okay. Have you called any so, method? No. Then method Where it is written? See, code is not written inside any package. Code is written inside some method only. But we have not called any method. Functionality is written inside some method. We have not called any method. Main method is not inside this library. Main method is inside our project. There must be some code written which is launching a browser. Correct. Constructor. So inside this constructor, there's a code written. Remember, we have created a constructor in which it is printing calculator, right? Calling constructor. Same way, there is a constructor inside this class. Even if you don't write this thing, you just create an object of a class. The very first thing that is called is the default constructor of that class. And inside the code is written to launch the browser. Now, in case you want to do navigation or do other functionality on that website, then simply, Call methods, driver dot, you get list of all the methods. See, one of the method is driver dot get. What it is asking for, URL in a string format. So we're gonna give the URL in a string format, HTTP way to automation.com, that's it. And if I run this, it's gonna again launch the browser and we're gonna do navigation to way to automation.com. And now if I want to print the title over here, see title, this title, then how to do it? Simply call one by one method driver.get title, that's it. Selenium task is just to get the title. It is not going to print it. Printing task is of Java. How to print in Java? Put it inside system out print ln. That's it. So one by one, you keep on calling the methods and you keep on automating your website. That is how Selenium works. So Selenium is just a collection of different classes, different methods, functionalities, and you just need to, and all these are already built. 
there might be some hundred lines of code written to get the title from the page. But why are we worried about it? We don't need to worry about those hundred lines of code. We are not creating Selenium. Selenium is already created by some developers who are already working with big, big organizations. Selenium project is already stable. We need not to worry about what code is written to launch the browser, to navigate. We know that there are a couple of methods. We just need to call those methods one by one and automate the website. And in order to call those methods, we need to know basic Java. We need to know how to create an object of class, how to call those methods, how to print it, how to use basic if else, basic loops, basic arrays. That's it. And that is how we'll be working on Selenium. And next time, if I want to integrate my Selenium project and I want to uh, I want to run this website or launch this on a mobile browser or I want to launch any mobile application, then I simply need to go to one website where you find all these open source libraries available, which is called as MVN repository, Maven repository. If you search for Selenium, you get it, you get it over here, Selenium Java. You download the latest one. Now you want to work with uh, mobile automation. So that is APM type Java client. So Java client is APM Java client, basically. You'll see APM mobile web driver. Go over here, see the latest one, click on jar file, download it, and then go to your project, right click, build path, add external archives, add this jar file. And now there must be some classes inside this Java client. Call those classes, automate it on your Android. Like we have Chrome driver, there we have Android driver. We have iOS driver for iPhone, right? So that is for APM. Now you want to integrate web services. You go over here, search for rest assured, rest assured. So we'll be starting, I guess, with the rest assured sessions from uh, coming Saturday. So in case you want to uh, like uh, learn rest assured part as well, then 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. is rest assured and 8 to 10 will be Selenium. So parallelly, you can attend both the courses and see within till the time your Selenium is done, you'll be perfect in both UI as well as API automation. So here you download this, you, you get this bundle, again is a jar file, bundle jar file, both are same. Then right click over here, uh, go to build path, add external archive, you got this rest assured jar, add it. Now you can automate web services. Same way, you uh, you want to automate things on database, you want to fire SQL queries, MySQL queries, simply search for MySQL. You get another jar file, MySQL connector. You want to automate things on desktop, search for WinApp. One by one, keep on adding all the jars and include the code and automate in one single project. In one single project, you can automate all these applications. That is how Selenium is very popular, right? <clears throat> X tools for accessibility. I I didn't get that. I've I've not used X tools. I I need to look at it. What these X tools are, right? EST timings. I um, mean, like two hours from where we started today. Right, you just need to go two hours back. So we started at 8 p.m. India time. So you can see at which time uh, you joined today. So just two hours back to that time is 6 p.m. IST. And that is where your API sessions are going on. So this will be your Selenium and Java will also run at the same time. So next weekend, people who are starting from scratch will be starting from Java. And people who have completed the Java will gonna join my sessions on Selenium. Rest who want to attend uh, Selenium Python, that will be at 8 a.m. 8 a.m. IST. So you can attend these three sessions in parallel as well. And people who don't want to learn API right now can also attend DevOps. We are conducting a training of DevOps as well at 6 p.m. So these two badges are running at the same time. So you can either attend DevOps, either attend this. 
and all sessions are being recorded. So in case you miss to attend any session, you can even go through the recording of that particular batch as well. Right. So I guess, uh, okay, it's already, uh, we are already late by 20, 12 minutes. So I think we should end our today's session over here itself. Uh, in the next session, uh, we're going to uh, have detailed discussion about this configuration, Maven and other things again. Right. And people who will be joining you will start with the Selenium batch, with, with the core Java batch. Right. So that's all, guys, uh, for today. I hope you have enjoyed the session. Uh, I can see people have uh, are still here uh, for more than two hours. So I can uh, sense that you have not got bored in the session. Right. And you have enjoyed any any feedback that you want to give. I hope you have enjoyed the session. Very interactive. Oh. Sure. Thanks a lot. And uh, I really uh, like that pe many people have interacted uh, via the chat box as well. So I want that everyone should participate in it because this will actually going to help you in your learning process. So I'll be sharing the WhatsApp information, uh, the WhatsApp group information in coming week. So you all guys uh, can be added in the WhatsApp group and just keep on sharing your queries, the challenges that you're facing and uh, your automation task, you can just paste it over there. And if uh, some of you know how, like, the answers to those queries, uh, instead of waiting for me to reply, you can try uh, helping each other. This will also help you in your learning process as well. Right? So yeah, I'll be uploading this uh, recording very soon and we're gonna share it with you. Yeah, thanks a lot guys. Thank you everyone for your feedback. Yeah. Thank yeah. you, Rob. Sure. Thanks. Thanks, guys. Yeah, next session will be uh, like 8 a.m. Uh, 8 p.m. India time for Selenium. Selenium Java. 8 a.m. IST is for Selenium Python. Right. Yeah, uh, recordings will be inside your uh, portal itself. So uh, inside, if you log into your portal with your credentials, so just go here, you'll see the fourth course over here. So this is where I'll be adding a new section. I'll name it as uh, batch May 2024, and then I'll add the very first session over here. So it, it will be added uh, very soon, right? So uh, Rahul, I have completed Core Java. So now different invite will be sent. To yeah, different course. meeting invite will be sent, but uh, just uh, keep yourself in the Core Java WhatsApp group. I have renamed it to the Selenium one. So that mm -hmm. WhatsApp group will remain same. Just for the Java people, uh, a new WhatsApp group will be created. For Selenium, it will, Remain same your Java Java group. Okay. Okay. Right. Thanks. Sure. Uh, Rahul classes will be on from Saturday and Sunday, right? Saturday and so, about this, yes. Okay. Okay. Yeah. All right. Thanks a lot, guys. Thank you, everyone. For DevOps and API, we have yeah you have to register. I mean, like there's a separate uh, WhatsApp group for it, uh, which is already sent uh, in the Telegram channel as well as to your mail IDs as well. So you can use the same meeting invites uh, to join those sessions, right? It's not like you need not to enroll again for DevOps or API, right? It is, everything comes in the lifetime member membership. You want to register for the course, uh, simply go over here to waytoautomation.com, go to lifetime membership, click on buy now. In case you are doing it outside India, then you can pay in USD from here. For inside India, then you can pay it. Uh, this is by credit card, or here you'll get the UPI, uh, like Google Pay, all the modes available. So once you're done, uh, just ping me on WhatsApp on this number. I'll share you all the details uh, immediately. Right. Telegram uh, link, just, just ping me on WhatsApp on this number. I'll share you the Telegram link as well. All right. And Telegram link uh, will be there in your welcome kit as well, the very first uh, mail uh, you got when you have registered. So just check for the Telegram link over there and uh, join yourself in that link. I'll, I'll approve the access. All right, guys. Uh, thank you all. Thanks for joining in. I hope to see you next weekend. Thank you, everyone. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.